Good Lord, that is cray. <laughs> this one is going to be part of the Light in the Darkness series. Kind of a day late compared to what I normally, in the time I release these things, but uh, yesterday I was very busy with one of my projects. I'm working very hard on the latest chapter of Werewolf Hunter. I'm not just going to be doing, like, the normal voice and sound effects and stuff like that, no. This time I'm actually adding clips. At least to the best of my power, working with what I've got. I've never tried stuff like this before, but I'm adding clips and different types of interactive kind of scenes. Maybe even a couple of videos. I'm not quite sure how that's going to run out yet. But I wanted to put that out there. Because I figured, you know... Any kind of news on that is good news, especially since I've had a lot of people throughout this last year ask about it. I can respect that. You know what I mean, forced me family stuff is kind of it forced me to delay things and the move down here near the border. You know how it goes. So I'm just gonna leave it at this. Hopefully, in the next few days, maybe maybe a couple of weeks. I don't think so, but one never knows. But as far as I'm knowing, things should be coming pretty quick. Just want to leave that out there when it comes to the next project that I have coming out mentioned this many times. Now, what's this one going to be about when it comes to the Light in the Darkness series? It's going to be about God's protection. I'm going to put up, a <clears throat> I'm going to put up an encounter, uh, an encounter, not that, uh, experience, I think it's the right word. I'm, trying, I'm going to put out an experience that I had when I was very young. As you guys already know, uh, during a per certain part of my life, after my parents divorced, my dad was horrifically abusive. It just is what it is. And unfortunately, he was stalking us, doing, a, you know, threatening us, just all kinds of god-awful stuff. So what happened was, to partially take care of that problem, my mother's brother he needed a place to stay. <clears throat> and pretty much, he decided, hey, you know, I'll go ahead and move in and, you know, it'll curtail a lot of the stupidity. Now, this man was a big dude, very dangerous dude, potentially, uh, you know, potentially unstable. Good guy, but just, <laughs> like I said, he was the kind of dude you did not want to piss off. He uh, had a definite uh, count when it came to people he hurt badly, so that was a good thing. So, so to say, that definitely changed my dad's mind <laughs> in a lot of ways. However, there was one thing that happened. You have to understand that. you got to remember, I had a twin brother. His name was Matthew, as you guys already know. Of course, he was special needs. Now, one of the things, unfortunately, that Mike had brought with him was a pistol. And things like this just happened, you know what I mean? It was not an intentional, cold-blooded thing. He was sleeping, he slept on the sofa, and he skipped the gun under the mat, you know, under the cushion. And somehow my brother got a hold of the damn thing. And he shot himself in the leg. Luckily, it was a 22. It literally ricocheted off his hip bone and made to take it out of his rear end. I mean, it's funny now, but it wasn't then. You know, of course, you know, seeing my brother in that situation, it, it was traumatic. It definitely shaped the way I see when it comes to firearms in the future. If a person who does not have any business up here owning one, they shouldn't have one. But that's just me. Now, again, that doesn't change my opinion on Second Amendment rights. I stand very firmly on them. Leave it at that. That ain't gonna be me, really. Anything else change my mind on that. You can't. Just gonna leave that out there. That's not politics, it's just me. Take it or leave it. Now, as I was saying, you know, this entire situation was terrifying. You know, my brother, he actually was still able to walk into the hospital, of all things. They got everything, you know, of course, like I told you, they got that damn bullet extracted out of him and everything else. But the thing is, that could have easily gone the wrong way. That could have killed him better than a dodo, man. I'm telling you. Of course, you guys already know Matthew's time did come in a much later part in our lives, of course. Then, of course, at that time, he was fairly well into adulthood, 23 years old. This was probably, I want to say, when we were both 14, maybe? 13, 14 ish. We were both very young. If you get my picture, I just kind of wanted to share this with you. Because I know for a fact God had his hand on my brother at that time. Because if not, he would have died. Premature, you know, like long before he did. If you understand what I'm trying to tell you, it was a mess. A real mess. And there were other situations I have been in and witnessed. I'm telling you right now, God, is, he has most of us, including this country, still under his protection. I think that's for a limited time, the way things are going. But I definitely wanted to put that out there. God keeps his protection over those who follow him, as well as those who keep the faith, and also those who do not. 
you have to remember there are more than one faith out there's more than one faith out there and there are other entities out there that may or may not be created uh, connected to the creator or not but i'm not going to say all of them are evil i'm just saying there are other entities that protect their followers don't ever forget that so i just wanted to kind of put that out there you know god's protection at least from what i have seen is a powerful and beautiful thing and this is for those who follow the faith so i'm putting that out there let's try to keep the faith strong and i promise you he will keep his protection on you you're going to be tried let me tell you you'll be going through trials you're going to be going through tribulations but i promise you he will get you through you guys be blessed and be safe